This up here right behind me is my home PC. I'm gonna be upgrading it in this video. So a little bit about this PC, it's running a Threadripper 2990WX on the MSI Creation motherboard. I don't remember exactly what chipset it is. And it's also got a 3090 uh, Seahawk running off an Corsair HX850 power supply. I believe it has 64 gigabytes of RAM, eight sticks of eight gigabytes of memory. So because this PC is wall mounted, I'm gonna have to uh, remove these two monitors. And while I removed these two monitors, I actually did pick up a second LG 4K monitor, the exact same one as this one. So I can have matching monitors. This will be removed and become like my home server monitor. What I'll be upgrading to is the Intel Core i7-13700K. I'm gonna be using the MEG Z690 Unify motherboard because this was for 12th gen. Uh, it's going to need a BIOS update. And I will also be swapping out the power supply at the same time for a, a thousand watts. I will also be using this Noctua NHD 15. Since this has a Threadripper specific cooler heatsink on it, it's not gonna fit onto the uh, LGA 1700 socket. For the memory, I'm gonna be using this Corsair Vengeance DDR5 memory. Uh, it's two sticks of 32 gigs, and it's going to be a no RGB build. This is the Spatium M470 drive. Uh, it's a one terabyte. It's a PCIe Gen 4. It's not the fastest drive out there, but it should work. And I'm going to just install it in this top slot right there. I gotta remember to remove these. Since this motherboard comes with a flash BIOS button and because it needs the BIOS update to support 13th gen. Quickly going through the instructions, I guess I prematurely installed the CPU and the memory. I just need to make sure to connect both the CPU uh, power cables and the 24 pin, uh, plug in the right one, and then also rename the BIOS file to the MSI.ROM. I'm extremely nervous because I've never used the flash BIOS button on a motherboard before. And so this is my first time doing it and I'm really afraid of breaking the motherboard for doing something incorrectly, so wish me luck. The instructions say to just push this flash BIOS button and I will go ahead and do that since I have everything else. Oh God, I'm so nervous. Pushed. Okay, so the flash BIOS button is now lit up. Okay, it's supposed to do that. Now the flash BIOS button is flashing. When it's done, it should just turn off. Is it that simple? That was really quick. That was maybe less than 10, 20 seconds. Yeah, I honestly, at this point, I have no idea if the flash BIOS button worked or not. Gotta find a graphics card uh, to see if it will do a display out. Got this uh, spare RX 570 that I hope it's working. Should have it all plugged up and I have it connected to that monitor right there. So the debug LEDs is uh, constantly switching between the CPU LED and DRAM. So either the BIOS flash didn't go properly or there might be something wrong with the memory itself. I don't think the board is bricked. So I took out one of the RAM sticks and uh, I cleared the CMOS again and now it's just stuck on CPU error on the debug LED. I have a suspicion that the BIOS flash didn't work. I'm gonna go find a better quality USB and try to flash the BIOS again because I think that's the main culprit. Got this USB drive. So I vaguely remember that I had a problem with this drive because I found another BIOS on it. I'm hoping the problem is that is with this drive. Two coworkers found that it was weird that the BIOS flash only took about 10 seconds and it should be a minute or so. We're gonna try that. If not, I have a 12th gen CPU that I brought back home to plug in and access the BIOS and use the M flash BIOS on this motherboard. So really hoping it was just an USB issue. Boink. <sighs> that went in way easier than the other drive. Here we go, flash BIOS again. Oh, oh, 
Okay, I think it's actually doing something now. It did not go for this long <laughs> last time. All right, success. Once the BIOS updated, it automatically reset and then booted up. Perfect. Now that I know this system is working now, I'm going to now disassemble all of this, and do some cleaning. It's going to be a long morning. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I'm partially through the disassembly of the previous system and one thing about this uh, hex wall mount chassis that we custom made that I completely forgot about is needing to remove this bottom wood panel to be able to access the screws to remove the power supply and I forgot about this top piece right here because there are two radiator screws down here that I need to access. So cleaning the graphics card out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall uh, the power supply, but I'm actually switching away from this 850i watt, or 850 watt from Corsair, excuse me, the HX 850i to the MSI MPG uh, A1000 something something PCIe 5. What I do really like about this is that, as you notice, uh, there is a little bit more clearance uh, switching to this new unit versus the Corsair one. And with that, it should give it should make it a lot easier for me to feed the cables through the back. So everything's almost done. It's more or less, I want to say 80% complete. Uh, we'll have to do some cable management on the back and plug in all the extension cables for the rear RO. But right now I'm reinstalling Windows onto my previous boot drive. Uh, I had this one in there initially, but my previous boot drive was a two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 from Seagate. It was a Fire Cuda 520. So I figured why give up the extra terabyte? So plugged in the two terabyte, waiting for the install. Once that's done, I could do the remainder of the cable management and then get it back on the wall. I've been trying to mount this PC onto the wall, but it's extremely difficult, especially when you're by yourself. And one of the main problems is here on the back side because i have so many cables here it's actually making it more difficult for me to get this to latch on to there i think for everybody that we've helped install this for there's like there's not this many cables so like at least the power supply cables you can kind of just mash against the back side but because I have all these extensions, it, it's making it more challenging. So uh, I'm gonna try again to mount this by myself, but you know, there's a lot of weight on that side, so it's super heavy. And with me not moving my table out of the way, it's a little bit awkward for me to align and get it up there.
can hear, I'm out of breath because this thing is heavy. And uh, try really, really hard not to drop it. <sighs> Almost ended in disaster. Before, when I was pulling on this side, there was nothing keeping it from me pulling out. So at least now, when I pull on it, it's not coming with me. Same with this side. <sighs> when I pull on it, it is not giving way. So I ran through my 70 gigabyte transcoding test through Adobe Media Encoder 2022. And if I did my math correctly, according to the log, this system did it in 34 minutes and eight seconds. And according to all of the data that I've logged from my previous tests, this Creator Z16P, which is a 12th gen mobile processor but the 3070 Ti did it in 30 minutes. PC's done, it's all set up. Seems to be running just fine, no major issues. I just gotta figure out cable management because the channel runs that I bought were too small to fit all these cables. As for why I upgraded this PC, why I upgraded from the Threadripper, uh, the Threadripper plus the 3090 that is currently on the system, it was exporting just as fast as a 10th gen Intel with like a 2080 mobile uh, GPU when I did my 70 gigabyte transcode test. You know, taking 70 gigs of Sony footage from when I went to PAX East, transcoding it to ProRes 422LT uh, preset inside Media Encoder because there's something funky with Premiere Pro taking in Sony's uh, FX3's 422 10-bit footage. Once I transcode it to ProRes 422LT, it works just fine inside Premiere Pro. Like it plays back fine, it edits fine. Like the fact that the 2990 WX Threadripper plus the 3090 was getting outperformed in some cases by a 10th gen Intel laptop with a 2080 and then starting to get beat out by a 11th gen uh, i7 with a 3060 laptop and then the 12th gen i7 with a 3070. That signaled to me there was something about the CPU that was holding back the render times, right? Upgraded to the 13700K, put the 3090 in it. And while it does perform better than the 2990WX Threadripper, it's performing just about the same as my 12th gen Creator Z16P. It has a i7 and a 3070Ti, you know, and it's a laptop. So it's great that it's rendering faster than the Threadripper, but it's kind of weird that it's rendering just as fast as a 12th gen laptop. I ran the export test on this desktop uh, uh, with a variety of different settings and the only time I saw the render times drop was when I enabled the auto overclocking through uh, Intel's XTU which during the rendering it bumped up the frequency to 5.4 gigahertz while uh, all the other tests I was running was at 5.3. All right, future Dalton jumping in really quick because while I was recording my original video, I completely had forgotten about the Z17 completing the transcode in 25 minutes. So in my original video, I was talking about potentially how it could be a media encoder software optimization issue, how it's not taking advantage of faster and better uh, hardware. If the Z17 is able to do it in 25 minutes while my desktop is doing it in around 30 to 34 minutes, then it's absolutely not the case. It's, it's nothing to do with the software. The only thing that I can think of right now is number one, I did something wrong during my setup or like my settings are correct on my desktop, um, which are giving me these baffling results that I'm getting. Or number two, there's something just really, really good about the MSI Creator Z series laptops. Like it, it, who, who could imagine that a laptop grade CPU and GPU from a previous generation is performing as well or outperforming a desktop grade 13th gen uh, CPU and GPU, right? Something doesn't make sense. It, it's not making sense, right? If you have any suggestions or settings that I could try with my 13th gen desktop, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments because these test results are actually accurate, you know, then if I, if I want the best transcode times that I don't have to wait, I should be doing all my batch rendering or just doing all my editing on like a Creator Z17. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.